In a Britain that's broke, they seem the perfect solution. Who's going to say no to getting cash in your hand? Millions of people have taken out a payday loan. Whether they're struggling to survive... I just had some phone for a fire with looking food in there. Or just want a good night out. How many payday loans have you had? 15 to 20. <laughs> wow. My so mum says money. to me like I'm the best living student in the world. <laughs> but have payday loans made it too easy to get hold of money? If I see clothes that I want and so I don't get paid for two days, I won't wait. I want them straight away. Now the government's cracking down on an industry accused of charging sky-high interest rates and causing spiralling debt. I felt like ending it. I was, I was so bad. And it was because of all the debt. I was start crying. <laughs> I'm Makita Oliver, and I know what it's like to have debt hanging over you. For 10 years, I was the face of music television, but recently I'm known for something completely different. If you Google my name, Nikita Oliver, first thing that comes up, Twitter, and then bankrupt. At 17, I was earning money I didn't know how to handle, and before I knew it, I owed thousands to the tax man. I just felt like I couldn't breathe and that I was sinking. I was so scared about my future, and I didn't tell anyone for two years. I want to find out the real truth behind the multi-million pound payday loan industry. To do it, I'll open my own payday loan shop. So it's an interest rate of 3,605.35%. Is that right, that? Will we just sit down and have a talk about why you came in today for the loan? To get some coke. <laughs> and go undercover to find out how many companies stick to the rules. I need the money because I've got drug debts. Why you need the money? That's none of our business. None of your business. I'll meet people who love them. That's how easy it is to do. Worked for them. The idea that I was earning money from this, it was horrible. And people who will never forgive them. My mate rang me and he said, he just said, and he's killed himself. <laughs> Among the empty stores and big name closures on Britain's high streets, one type of business is booming. Shops offering payday loans are everywhere, creating an industry worth more than two billion pounds. This street in Rochdale has six of them, and at one time had nine. Josh has been using them to get cash ever since he was old enough. Usually you look forward to 18, you're free. You, know, you can go out and get served. It's not that you can get a payday loan. Though. That many people are doing it now, it's like fashion, if you will. 20-year-old Josh is young, British and broke, and payday loans have seen the answer. All I honestly see is that £1,000 in your hand. I don't see... This 1.99% per month. What the f is an FBI to an 18 year old? In the two years he's been taking them out, he's got to know this high street well. I've had about eight or nine pay their loans altogether. I've had hundreds and hundreds of pounds off them. I've had one from there, one from there, uh, I've had one from there, and I've had one from down at the bottom, check centre there as well. Um, I've got one off them. Everywhere on this street, basically, I've had one from. Getting a loan, is, it's, the, the feeling is good, obviously, you've got money in your pocket. And who's going to say no to that? Who's going to say no to getting cash in your hand? You just think dollar signs, do you know what I mean? Get 100 quid, go out on a weekend. Nice little bit of pocket money. Josh is unemployed, but he knows all the tricks to make sure that doesn't stop him getting as many payday loans as possible. When you go in, they ask for a bank statement and obviously they look for these regular payments. Um, you get your mates to put in money through backs or whatever. Give them a bit of the money for going through the trouble. If they ring, you just give them your mate's number. Obviously your mate's answer, pretend that he's your boss or whatever. And put in false information. So it's both things like putting your name in capitals. The address, you can put blagged address, empty addresses. But if they had a mind about them, obviously looking at me, weren't going to pay it back. <laughs> Josh has been out of work for two years and with Rochdale hit hard by the economic downturn. Hi, you all right? I'm Rikita. He says his friends are in the same boat. Would you say that quite a high majority of people 
here under 25 probably had a pay yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, I'd say about 80, 85%. 85%? Yeah, definitely. Easy. Even my mum's had one. It's just normal. The way things are these days, it's just the easiest way out. This part of England is cast with poverty. The worst for benefits. Everyone's basically messed up around here. It is a bad place. But Rochdale's no different to other parts of the country, where youth unemployment has rocketed and young people are struggling with money or to find work. So the quick fix of a payday loan can be easy to get and hard to resist. Josh didn't think about the downsides, but after years of borrowing, he's up to his neck in debt. Now I owe six, seven grand. Probably 20% that I borrowed and 80% interest. So it's like just over a grand that you borrowed? Yeah. And now it's six grand to yeah. pay back. I mean, that just feels completely unrealistic. Exactly. How do you expect a 20-year-old to pay that amount of money back? It's going to take over 11 to 12 years for me to pay off all <gasps> these loans. 12 years? Yeah. That's what they've estimated it at. Josh, what responsibility do you take? If, if I could turn back time, I would never, ever, ever step foot in a payday. I wouldn't go online for a payday. I wouldn't do anything like that again. Just feels like a huge, huge mistake. Yeah. It's a regret that I'll live with now for the next 12 years. Though I've never been in the same situation as Josh, I do understand exactly what it's like to have serious money problems. When I was declared bankrupt, it felt like I was in a financial mess I would never get out of. The circumstances were different, but I totally get that it isn't always easy managing your money. When you're desperate and can't see anywhere to turn, payday loans can seem the perfect solution. Two million people are said to use them in the UK, borrowing from hundreds of different lenders on the high street and online, thanks to TV ads that make everything seem so simple. You tell us how much you want, how long you want it for, and we tell you how much it's going to cost. For a short term loan, payday loans are supposed to be a quick way of borrowing a small amount to tide you over until your next payday. And she needs an emergency loan of one hundred pounds to get it fit. But everyone from the government to the Archbishop of Canterbury has taken a pop at them, saying they're not always lent responsibly or to people who can afford to pay them back on time. Instead, it's usually the speed of getting a loan that the companies focus on. It's easy money, in your hands as fast as you want it. Very attractive if your money's not stretching as far as it used to. And that's a message some lenders have used familiar faces to get across. We've all had money troubles at some point. I know I have. But is there an easy way to get a loan? Check out cashlady.co.uk. With Cash Lady, it's simple to apply for... I actually have a real soft spot for Kerry Catone. I think when I went bankrupt, I sort of did a mental list of people in my head that had also gone bankrupt, and she came into my head, and I sort of felt like a weird bond with her through it. But why would she or I be people to ever talk to about looking after your money? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. This is a person that's been obviously very irresponsible with their money, and they've chosen her as the face of, hey, this is where you should come to get money. This Cash Lady advert was banned after complaints it encouraged young people with financial problems to see payday loans as the way out. And soon afterwards, the company dropped Kerry when she was declared bankrupt a second time. Other lenders have been forced to change their ads because they didn't make clear a crucial detail how much the loan will cost. Too many bills this month. Do what I did. Visit quickquid.co.uk forward slash TV and get the money you need today. I would not have got how much the loan was going to cost me from that advert. Where on earth and the whole thing, apart from this tiny, tiny APR, which is literally about this big, which no one really understands anyway. And you can see why it's not something they want to shout about, because the interest rate charge, the APR, can typically be anything between 1,000% and a staggering 5,853%, compared to around 20% you'd usually pay on a credit card. With big numbers like that, what I can't get my head around is why it doesn't seem to be putting people off. In fact, despite all the criticism, as a nation, we can't seem to get enough of them. Some people take out loan after loan to finance a lifestyle they can't afford. Okay, so will there be people there at half ten? Right, well, we're coming at half ten, okay? <laughs> 
Orla and her friends are at Liverpool University, but they don't let student poverty get in the way of a good night out. We usually go in a bar call, we come here. We can go to Salt Dogs here, Santa Chapitos, and then we spend like 60 quid in Santa Chapitos on shots and stuff, and then the casino. Casino? I mean... Yeah. You're gonna get Who's got money for a casino? <laughs> My so mum says to me, like, I'm the best living student in the world. <laughs> <laughs> How many payday loans have you had? 15 to 20. <laughs> That's about one every month, that's sounding like. Every time they're about 300, 200. Have you ever been there when she's gone out to use the phone and then come back 100 pounds richer? Yes, in my flat. Yeah, I did it in Laura's flat. Yeah. It's fine. I'm so skinny, I'm so skinny. Fine, I've got a longer, we're going out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were just like, I was totally fine. <laughs> I, I think they're great. Why course. not just not have the night out? I mean, I I know exactly well, how you I'm feel, good. but why not God, just not no. have the night out? I'm a shit night. I can go out when I want, do what I want. I don't live at home. Everyone's single and fun. Yeah. I honestly think they help because, especially when you know you've got a shit loan coming in, you know the exact date you're going to get your money. You're going to have £1,600. Do you need £300? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know you're going to pay back, it's fine. And it's so easy to do. I always use the app, it's a, it's a slider. So, so welcome back. Hey, welcome back, Orla. Welcome back, Orla. It makes you feel quite, like, yeah. cosy. <laughs> like, hey, we missed yeah, you. I know, so look, you, how much cash do you want? We can send you £200 within five minutes of approval. Okay, so. let's try 200 then. So if I go for 21 days, yeah. I pay back £250. To so get 200 50 quid for interest. three weeks, 50 quid interest, not that much. Oh, because then I'm a good customer, my money's there quicker. So if I wanted that right now, we could go back inside and I could go to the cash machine and it'd be there. 200 quid. 200 quid, just like that. And I think that if you need one, it's a good reason, why not? I don't think I could ever see it as a positive thing ever. But I do, I do kind of understand what she means by if you want to have a nice night out and there's a way to have a bit more money, I, I, if there's an app on your phone, I, I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably use it. Orla's app gets her money from the best known name in the payday business, Wonga. The company sponsors football clubs, TV shows, they're on Facebook. There's rarely a day goes by when I don't see their logo. And last year, from lending online, their profits rocketed to eighty-four and a half million pounds. That's a lot of Wonga. And one person that's still paying some of that is Steve. Hi, Steve. Nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. His attitude's always been: Why go without when you can get cash and party from the bank of payday loans? I think with me personally, it's if I want to buy something, I just I want to buy it there and then. You know, if if I see clothes that I want and I don't get paid for two days, I won't wait. I, I'll just go. And I want them straight away. And... But this isn't money to pay rent. This is money to party and yeah. buy clothes. When you're skinned and you go into a clothes shop, yeah. and you just see about twenty t-shirts, jeans that you want, and yeah. you know, that money's available in ten minutes for you to buy them. So it lets you live a bit differently, even if it's just for the evening? Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to go to the cinema and I can get a payday loan, I wouldn't just go standard. You know, I'd go premiere and get the full package and stuff like that. It lets you, you know, treat yourself. But no one can treat themselves forever, and Steve's borrowing has now caught up with him. How much debt are you in now? About three grand, three thousand pounds. If I'm honest, you don't seem as worried as I would think you should be. I mean, I was like, I was terrified every day for about a year. It's when it's two days before you get paid, you get your wage slip, and you're looking at how much you're getting, and then you're writing down how much you owe out in payday loans, and that's when you get that sick feeling. And then the thing is, because you're nervous and worried and you need, like, a cigarette or a drink, you then borrow one more to calm yourself down, you know, worrying what you're going to do. Steve's inability to control his spending is his own fault. But do payday lenders make it too easy for people like him to keep on borrowing more and even take out multiple loans at the same time? 
He's got nine of them already and a history of defaulting, but he's convinced he can easily get more. Get up to 1,500 quid in four minutes. And he's going to show me how. This is cash, lady. So is that meant to be Kerry Katana? Warning, suspicious sight. But even the computer thinks this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> You just click the loan amount that you want, next payment date. You've asked for 50, right? Yes. And now we've told them your information. They're saying, Are you sure you don't want to make it 100? So before you've even got your first loan, they're already seeing if you want to double it. Yeah. See, that's what, that's what I mean. That's what they all do. Right. But after that's all done, so now it's just waiting for an email to confirm that it's been approved and when it's going to be in your bank account. Your money has been processed and your money should be in your account today between half three and half five. I'm actually quite amazed how easy that was. Yeah. Your loan amount of £50 pounds will be transferred to your account within a few minutes. In fact, with no bother at all, Steve's able to get four separate loans all against one payday. Over the space of about 15 minutes, we've managed to get, what, 350 quid in your account? 350, yeah. And without any of them asking whether you had loans out with anyone else? No, not, not and that's how easy it is to do. It feels a bit addictive. It feels like you could sit here all afternoon just yeah. doing them. When it's that simple, I can see how Steve might be tempted to borrow first and worry about the consequences later. But if for Steve, payday loans have become almost an addiction, for 23-year-old Lauren Jennings, they were a dirty little secret. A graduate with dreams of carrying on her studies, she borrowed money with huge interest rates, telling no one until it all went wrong and her mum discovered the truth. Teresa, when did you realise that Lauren had taken out a payday loan? And did you even know what, what that was? I remember Lauren and I having a conversation about my God, look at the interest rate on that, and how would you be stupid enough to take one of those out? Really? Yeah. At the time, she hadn't already taken one. <laughs> I don't actually know, because the first thing I did know was that I found a piece of paper, because she's not very good at covering up, you know, she will leave stuff laying around. I just confronted her with it immediately, and she just promised me it was a one-off. She wouldn't be stupid enough, her words, to go down that track again, and... I believed her. <laughs> it turned out that she borrowed £200 in March of last year, and by May, they, well, they've sent us these letters were all saying she owed £703. And, so that it went up, and, and in two months it went up that yeah, much? Well, and when my husband phoned, he had to settle it, it had gone up again because of how long it had taken in the post and it was £1,000 we settled. And the rate of interest is 27,272% APR. 27,272% APR is the highest interest rate I've ever heard. No wonder Speed Credit, one of the companies that Lauren borrowed from, is no longer in business. I, I mean, I, I've, I stood here absolutely shaking with rage <laughs> at my daughter, really. So, so angry. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. It feels weird since we've been talking about you. Hi, nice to meet you. I was, just saying, I was just saying it was a bit strained, wasn't it? It's not that. The remnants of payday loans are still sort of hanging over the house. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I realised the seriousness of it until my mum found out, and then it was like but we, lump of bricks on my head. I don't think, I don't, that's what I think. I don't think you realised that it was ever going to catch up with you. The first one that I discovered. Yeah, that I did. That is the first one. Yeah, and you promised me that that I would did. be a one-off and that you would never do it again. Yeah. And you lied. It's the disappointed. That's the thing that, that's the thing that gets you. Mm -hmm. When they're disappointed, not angry. Like, just shout at me. Your dad paid off that thousand pounds. You've not even thought about paying him back that money. So in a position. No, no. Well, I know, but had that not been your father, and had that been that company, 
what would you have done then? What do you think you would have done if your parents weren't here to help you with that first act? Become a prostitute. Yeah, of course. No, I'm going to become a prostitute. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that you did go get more payday loans after your parents had bailed you out? I, well, I don't think, I wasn't thinking, I was just... It, it, it wasn't, it, all it is is you think, oh, I've got money in my bank in half an hour. People get into trouble with these companies because it's just too easy. It's too easy to get money. You can just walk in off the street and get money off them. 15 minutes and it can be in your bank. Do you feel like that. she's learned her lesson? Mm, don't know. Might have to have a conversation with her later about something else I found today. I have learnt my lesson, no matter what you think. I know you will never believe me ever again, anything, whatever I say, which is really irritating, but there you go. I can understand how mortified Lauren must have been when her mum found out what she owed. I've never properly spoken to my mum about my debts, and maybe it's about time I did. Hi, Mum. <laughs> it started to happen, and I sort of knew it would happen because you, you were quite, um, you got quite defensive about if I would be like, you know, what are you doing, or even trying to talk to you about it. You got quite mm. sort of slightly, well, not slightly, very narky. Um, so I worked it out. What happened is I, I went bankrupt, but then I didn't. I didn't tell anyone. I had a drawer that I hadn't opened that was just like this of bankruptcy letters. I remember I took all the letters, put them on that balcony and just set a light to them. Did you? <laughs> like, like an actual crazy Did person. You? I was just like, this isn't happening wow. at all. Just do that. And because I thought I'd gone through it and no one knew, no one was going to know. And you'd be able to. And I'd be to... able to just like get, get back on my feet. Obviously when it came out in the papers, that's when I was more upset for mum because I felt really bad that it was like really public and I felt like that must have been a really horrible thing to have to have your daughter in the papers making such a big mistake. That wasn't the hardest bit for me, I was just worried about you. I just want to know you're all right and just to make sure that it was a situation that I learnt from. That you learnt from, exactly. My mum calls it the humbling and it was humbling because it, it, it's true, it, it drags you down to ground zero and makes you look at everything. You have to look at yourself. Debt is affecting more young people than ever before. It's one reason why it's said under 25s are three times more likely to take out a payday loan. But I want to find out more about what's making them do it. To find out, I've gone back to Rochdale, a town with already plenty of payday loan stores. But we're opening up another one. We've taken over this empty shop, made it look like we're in the business of lending money and rigged it with hidden cameras. OK. All right, can you see that cable? No. We're open for two days and don't really have any loans to offer. But we're hoping people looking for some fast cash will call in to tell us why, so we can see how much they know about what they're getting into. I'm tucked away upstairs, out of sight, along with some financial experts we've got on hand to give advice. And it's not long before our first potential customers come in. <laughs> just have a seat. Oh, Cheers. <laughs> yeah, just a loan shop. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what Addy doesn't need to get one of them. I've never owned before. Um, I've had a couple. Yeah. You're after about 150. 250, 150. Just 100. Like all responsible lenders should, we're going to be upfront about our interest rates. And a representative annual percentage rate, that's the APR. Our rate is an average of what you'd pay the best known lenders. Of 3,605.35%. Wow. 3,605.35%. Right. So it's an interest rate of 3,605.35%. Is that right, that? Better than all the rest. But before anyone gets too keen, it's time to come clean. Hi, I'm Makita. About exactly who we really are. I don't want to shock you. We're not actually a payday loan company. What do you usually get your loans out for? My uh, work has reduced all my hours down, so now I can't afford to get shopping and basic stuff. I've got two little boys. I constantly worry about money. There's no other way, is it? You've got to get payday loans to survive. There's... 
It's the easiest way, isn't it? But it's not that easy if the interest rates spiral out of control. And here's how that can happen. Take out a loan and pay it back on time, and you'll usually only pay something like an extra £25 interest on top of every £100 you borrow. But if you go over the deadline, as up to a third of people do, that's when those high interest rates can kick in, and what you owe will grow at a frightening speed. You could end up paying huge amounts back. I want to test how much our customers really understand about APR, and I've got the perfect way to do it. Do you guys know anything about APR? Interesting. Yeah. So we've done, like, sort of a payday loan app. I mean, this thing's brilliant, because you can really see visually just how scary it gets so quickly, just because of the type of APR that payday loans have. So you're going to borrow 100. By the time you got to seven months, you'd be paying something like £822. And then if you let it go to a year, over five and a half grand. That didn't know it could loan up to that much money. Yeah. Would this experience today put you off maybe getting a payday loan in the future? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, never doing it again. If the reasons for wanting a loan could be a little unexpected... What did you need the loan for today? Holidays and stuff. Mainly for house. It's for? It's for just partying. 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 Yes. A partying loan. We would just sit down and have a talk about why you came in today for the loan. To get some coke. Yeah, right. <laughs> to get some coke. <laughs> I was also struck by how many people hoping to get one don't even have a payday. Uh, are you in employment, either of you? No, I'm on a good spot. Oh, right. Chat chat. I see, yeah. Um, do you have to be working? Been work at the minute? No. Work at the minute? Oh. But it was clear some of them, like Dean, had a desperate need for cash. What was the purpose of the loan? Yeah, just just day to day essentials, yeah? I just had to send the phone for a fire with looking food in that. <laughs> How bad has it got today to sort towards money? Yeah, I've got no money uh, at all, so that's why we've asked all family members and stuff like that, but they're in the same boat, they ain't got no money, so that's why we just come here today to see if we could get any money so we can put like, gas and electric on and that and some food and that just to get us through. So did you leave the house today looking for a payday loan company? You, you have to do anything to get money these days, don't you? You have to try. I like being independent, but there's times where you have to ask people for help, but I don't really like it. I'd rather try to do it myself. And it makes you feel small. How old are you? I mean, I'm 21. And you guys don't have anyone else that will help you with money? Uh, no, uh, my dad and that just died like four months ago or something. Where's your mum? Uh, and she left me when I was like two year old. The only person that I've got now is my girlfriend. I don't have no one, no one, no one else. <laughs> I just feel really bad for him. Dad's just died and it's, he doesn't have any family. He's like really trying to change his situation. And uh, he's now gonna go get paid and it's like watching him walk in the completely wrong direction. But Dean's situation isn't unique. In 2004, the rate of unemployment in under 25s stood at just under 12%. Today, it's almost double that. And nearly a quarter of this age group rely on benefits. It's a story Dennis Hussey from the National Debt Line hears all too often. Why are we young and British and broke? I think the country economically is struggling much more than it was a few years ago. Benefits are being cut, there are less jobs out there than there were before, and it means that everyone is feeling the squeeze. Even though there's less money to go around, the cost of living is still rising, but there's less money available to pay these bills than there was before. And these payday loan companies that you see all over the high street have spotted a gap in market over the last few years, and they have filled that gap very effectively and very ruthlessly. And what, what, what was that gap, the, the immediacy? that people are used to now and the, expect the they need things quickly. The immediacy is one, whereas in the past, people might have been able to get more assistance from the benefit system, crisis loans, right. short-term help. That assistance is being reduced, so people have to turn elsewhere. The money is still needed. Where do you go for it? You go on the high street, or you go hungry, or cold, or both. I 
I've come to Swansea. It's another area struggling with the effects of the recession and also home to Sarai, who for the last two years has found it hard to ignore the avalanche of payday and doorstep lenders offering to solve her money troubles. So how long have you lived in this area? Um, I've lived in this area for four years now. I grew up in Trashland, which is the area over that side. So you've been here for like four years since you've been in the area. Have you noticed people talking about these kind of companies more and more and just like generally just feeling that, that more people are involved with them? Now everybody's talking about it because it's like I see different people all the time. It's like, oh, I've got a loan. I owe this much of Wonga or Provident or anybody. It's almost like the area is like under siege from payday loan companies. Yeah. This is my favourite age. <laughs> this is so cute. Yeah, no answering back. Sarai and best friend Katrina are both members of a group for young mums, most of whom are affected by bad debts. So how many ladies are in the group? Nine of us. And how many out of the nine have loans out with payday loan companies? Five of us. Five, five. five out of nine of you. But none of those five have jobs. They were offered loans on their benefits and tax credits. What is absolutely ridiculous to me is that they are called payday loans. You weren't even working, so this wasn't a payday. This was your benefits paying back. Yeah. Did they ever talk about the fact that you weren't actually working? They'd ask, um, first off, are you working or are you on benefits? You're on benefits. And then they'll just take in how much you actually receive a week or a month. And they'll say, right, OK, that's fine. But it's never seen as a negative. They're never like, OK, so if you're on benefits, we can't do this. No. As long as you have, you know, a certain amount coming in, they'll just, they'll be fine with it. So Ryan and Katrina both got into trouble as their first Christmas as single mums approached and they started receiving text messages and leaflets through the door offering them loans. They know it's, it's the most money-making time for them. They know, like, people in our circumstances, especially if they've got one or, you know, two or more kids, they need money and they're going to struggle and they start targeting. Was it like that for you as well? Yeah, I was with Phoebe's father. So for a Christmas, I done it on my own. So I ended up getting a loan out. It looks really easy. You know, you, you borrow this much, you pay this much, this much back in 30 days or however many days, and it looks really reasonable until you've got to pay it back. Well, what do you do in that situation then? Borrow more money. <laughs> Whilst trying to provide for their young families, both girls now found themselves with bad debt problems. Hello. So Rise led her to nearly having a breakdown. What were you feeling like? I was really depressed. I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't face anybody. Me and the kids were in the house every day, and I just felt, I felt like ending it. I was, I was so bad. And it was because of all the debt. And there was the lowest moment of my life. I was just terrified, I was scared, I was on my own. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> it feels like you girls were getting them to help you feel independent and be able to look after your families yeah. on your own. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't pay for my kids. Oh my God. <laughs> The girls freely admit they shouldn't have borrowed the money, but they believe that the companies targeted them when they were most vulnerable. And when someone's offering what seems an easy fix, it can be hard to say no. Cases like this are one of the reasons why the payday loan industry is now under so much scrutiny. People like Sarai, who can't afford to pay the money back, have ended up taking out another loan and another just to keep their head above water. It's what's known as a rollover, and it's these loans that make lenders the most money. In fact, almost half of everything they pocket. I want to know how some of these companies decide who to lend to in the first place. And I've been put in touch with someone who's ready to expose their secrets. For six months, he worked for one of the high street lenders and experienced their strategy firsthand. He quit, but still worried about repercussions, he doesn't want to be identified. What, were you ever given any rules on someone's vulnerability? No, there's no rules whatsoever with vulnerability. Um, it wouldn't matter if they came in and they looked like 
they'd slept at a shelter, they had a bank statement and they had their ID and they applied and got accepted, you would give them that loan. And I remember in my first week I would be corrected by my manager that as soon as they said they weren't working, they would be like, no, but uh, they've got children, they might get tax credits, do it off tax credits. The people that I saw coming into this shop are people that are struggling to feed their children. I just think that's so... It just feels so immoral. The idea that I was earning money from this, it was... it was horrible. He only worked in one store, but hearing from our whistleblower has confirmed my worst fears about how some of the industry works. So at what point does profit become more important than everything else? I'm on my way to meet someone whose loan has cost more than just money. I've been here for just over a year now, so I'm getting used to it. It's not much. It's uh, my home, though. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's always been just you? you... In, this, in this flight, yeah. Yeah, it's always just me. When Chris left work due to ill health, he felt he had no choice but to take out a £400 payday loan to cover his bills. He soon ran into trouble and couldn't afford to repay it, but the lender wanted their money back. Uh, they weren't prepared to reduce the manageable amount, they weren't prepared to give me a repayment plan, and I was living at my parents' at the time. Right. Did your parents they, know what was going on? They did, when the letters started coming and the phone call started letters with red writing. Yeah. We're going to send bailiffs out and we are going to repossess property in your house. That's their property. It's their property and the last thing they want is bailiffs coming and taking their stuff to cover a loan that I took. So it would start arguments between me and my mum and then it would start arguments between my stepdad as well and it just got to a point where they didn't want me in the house. So after a while it's not even about the money anymore? No. You might have £900 debt but I had priceless amounts of family damage. The pressures of dealing with his illness, combined with the stress of the barrage of calls and letters to his parents' home, led Chris to breaking point. The night that I ended up here, I felt like I had nowhere to turn. This is a point you've got to emotionally because of was, the things that have happened. I mean, everything that was going on, I just could not bear to live. I didn't think it wasn't premeditated. I climbed across the bridge and I was on this side of it, just holding on to one of those pipes, ready to let go. I was very emotional, I was crying. Um, but I was no fear. I was very prepared to let go. To me at the time, it was scary, eh? To think that I had to wake up tomorrow to deal with it all again. Medical professionals, myself included, my family all agree. The final straw was the payday loan company. And that's what pushed me to attempt suicide. Chris was sectioned for his own safety in a secure hospital, but even there he found the company refused to leave him alone. I was in a psychiatric hospital for just over four weeks. And even when I was in there, I was getting phone calls. First thing they would say is, can you make a payment today? And I'm, well, sorry, no, I don't have access to a do you think the they knew card. what kind of establishment they were finding you at? Uh, I did explain to them I was on a psychiatric ward. You can't just... Pop, pop to the cash point. I couldn't, I couldn't even pop to the local shop just around the corner. Mm. Um, I was on that ward for my own protection. There's big, huge electro magnets holding the door shut or else I'd have <laughs> broke three weeks ago. And then, um, and no, were... I can't get to the bank. No, I can't pop to the bank. To be honest, looking back at it, you couldn't make the story up. With the help of Citizens' advice, Chris's lender eventually agreed to a debt plan allowing him to pay off a pound every month. But after a rift with his family and thoughts of ending his life, he feels the pressures created by that £400 loan caused his life to unravel, and it will be hard to get over the damage. I'm feeling quite shocked um, after what we're finding out. Actually quite angry because these companies are giving out loans to people who are not in a financial position to ever pay them back. Like, someone like Sarai should never have been given a loan. And then when they can't pay them back, they're being harassed and pressured to the point where they're actually contemplating taking their own lives, like someone like Chris. And 
it just feels like the companies have absolutely no regard for their customers or take any responsibility for the position that they're left in. Attitudes towards payday lenders have begun to change. An official report three years ago said they provided a legitimate, useful service that helped to cover a gap in the market. But this year, the Office of Fair Trading said that there was widespread irresponsible lending in the industry. And all over the country, the fight back has begun. The Wonga Conga! This is a national day of action against payday loan shops. This national day of demonstration attracted thousands of people. Look, it's like Free Willy, except it's not Free Willy. It's in debt, Willy. Payday loan companies who offer you instant cash with no background checks for extortionate rates of interest. It's predatory. It's predatory lending. Someone who's definitely had enough of the worst of the industry is Jolly and Rubenstein. For all 50 to 500 pounds. He's the face of BBC Three's comedy series, The Revolution Will Be Televised, and he's also a friend. So he's 219.1% APRA. Is that a good deal? Last year, a sketch on his show caught on camera how some lenders do only the most basic checks about whether you can afford to take out a loan. We do loans up to £5,000. Oh, great. And they didn't seem to be bothered about how you'd spend it. I need the money, really, to pay back some gambling debts and some drug debts, but is that all right? <laughs> as long as we get paid back, we don't care what you do with the money. As long as we get paid back, don't care what you do with the money. I left £300 then, please. For the record, that's not a problem. For me, um, I thought that when I was like, right, look, uh, I'm a drug dealer, I thought that would raise a red flag. Yeah. And so that was fine. And that didn't. That shocked me. I mean, to, to, when you start saying to people, like, can I pay you back in weed? You know, <laughs> and, and, and then they're like, no, you can't. But when would you like an appointment? <laughs> exactly. I mean, anyone in their right mind presented with that. Yeah. You'd think that someone would be like, this person is unstable, like, this person is not really the sort of person we should just be giving loads of money to and lending it to. This business is entirely dedicated to, to profit at all costs. Absolutely nothing that matters apart from the ones and the zeros. But a lot's happened since Jollyan's filming. In March this year, the Office of Fair Trading told the 50 biggest payday loan companies they needed to clean up their act and stop running misleading ads, make sure they give clear information, and better check that borrowers are able to pay back the loan. So has that done the trick? To find out, I'm going to go undercover to see if some payday lenders are still breaking the rules. It's nothing like anything I've done before, and I'm terrified. For moral support, I'll be taking an old acquaintance with yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. With nine payday loans to his name, Josh is better placed than most to help me get the answers that I need. We look like we're going to, <laughs> to war or something. <laughs> uh, so it says on the front, £200 interest free loan. We'll see what they say about so that. <laughs> We called into ten loan shops in towns around the northwest. I'm just um, inquiring about how you get a payday loan. How much are you looking for? Roughly about hundred pounds. And it did seem the crackdown on payday lending is making a difference. Some of them said they no longer offer payday loans, and they were very open about why. Basically, if you, you know, if you've been watching the news, uh, they've been all over payday loans. But that didn't mean they were squeaky clean. Does it matter what we're spending our money on? No. They're not ashes. <laughs> They're not bothered. Really <laughs> not? No. I just went and gambled it all. Yeah, you could spending. do if you wanted to, as long as you paid them back. She were a bit more chatty, weren't she? I need the money because I've got drug debts. Why you need the money? That's none of our business. None of your business. No, no. Do you not really bother? No, 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 no. no. So if he was a young kid, who was quite blatantly borrowing money so that he could buy drugs. It's just a complete lack of responsibility to go, no, we don't care, once you got the money, it's up to you. More than half of the shops we asked would still give us a payday loan as long as we were getting money coming in from somewhere. 
They didn't care if we had a regular payday and were more than happy to lend against benefits. But I'm not working, but I've got a tax code. You don't work for when you're getting child tax benefits. Yeah? So that's, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. So they saw no problem in using the money I would be getting to feed my kids. So it's not a payday, but you can still get one. Still get one. Most surprising of all was that we still rarely got any explanation of interest rates or of how the cost of the loan could spiral. That's something they all should be doing. But instead, some downplayed the APR, saying it's not relevant for this type of loan. APR, should I be worried about? No, because APR stands for annual percentage rates. Because it's only a payday loan, it's only until your next payday. One shop did try and spell out the maths to us, but unfortunately, they got it wrong. It's like £16 a month, right? So it works out about £4 a week. And you pay back like £92 over the year. All right, thank you. Thank you. In fact, that shop's interest would be more than twice that. No one is saying that these sums are easy, but if we're relying on them to explain things, you'd hope they get it right. Really good. I don't know how I would have done it without you, actually. Really pushy. Yeah. <laughs> Very few lenders did everything by the book, but with no two of them operating in exactly the same way, it seemed like some of them were almost making it up as they went along. And I can't quite believe that even now, after all the flack they've been getting, some of them still don't seem to be lending responsibly. But I want to hear what the industry itself has to say about how they lend money. So I've come to the organisation that represents most of them. Why do you think there is so much negative attention on payday loan companies? It's an industry that's grown up under the spotlight. However, I can talk about the positives that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Eight out of ten pay it back in full and on time. So you feel that maybe everyone that is negative about payday loan companies, they've just got it wrong? No, I don't feel like that at all. There is bad practice out there, and we're working quite closely with the regulator to make sure that that's eradicated. So what checks do your members do before, before lending money? Is it really possible to do the right type of checks? Within 10 minutes, you can find out whether someone yeah. has the right affordability? They happen within a split second, the checks through the, through the credit reference agencies and all the online databases. They can get that information immediately, the same way credit cards do. The difference is the speed that the money lands in your bank account. How many people do you think really understand what APR is? I have no idea what it means. It's really misleading because it's annual, whereas our product is obviously very short term. And so yes. our members are committed to showing it. You have to show it because it's a regulation. And they'll talk you through and explain it. But they'll also tell you what the cost of the loan is in pounds and pence. I feel that there are some people that we just know are a bit skint. They're on, they're on child benefits, they're, they're on JSA, and the last thing they need in their life is a payday loan. I think that's a difficult one, because if their income and expenditure is there and they can afford to pay back the loan once they've taken it out and they need it, then I don't mm. think we can decide whether or not they're right to have that access to credit. They obviously need it for a reason, for a purpose, whatever it may be, whether it's an emergency. Yeah. Where would they go if they couldn't access a payday loan? But aren't the loans being given out irresponsibly in the first place? I think it's important that the loans are only lent to people who can afford to pay them back. There's no kind of commercial business sense in lending to someone that's going to run away with 100 quid and you're not going to see it again. There is she makes it all sound very positive, as does Wonga. The biggest in the business told us they don't see themselves as a payday company because their loans have more flexibility. Like some other lenders, they also freeze interest rates so it can't spiral. And, as all lenders now have to, they told us that they limit the number of times a loan can roll over. But even so, I've seen with my own eyes the devastating consequences when lenders don't stick to the rules. And I've met people who'll be paying off their debts for years to come. But there are others who won't get that chance. Kenny Davis was a rugby fanatic and played with a group of lifelong friends. You've been playing rugby together since how old? Since we were under like sevens, under eight, so, so seven years old. Just the most funniest, maddest guy I'd ever meet. He was just the one always on a laugh. Crazy, I'd call him as well, he was. Everyone loved him. That's why it's his legend, that's why everyone used to call him legend. He was heart and soul of the team. Did you have any awareness of the fact that he was in debt? I, I knew he was in debt, obviously, but... I didn't know how far in debt he was. After Christmas, basically, he hurt his ankle so he couldn't work. And that's where the spiral obviously went down from there. That's when you think he probably yeah. first took out a loan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he thinks he's working the week after and 
it's when you don't work the week after and you're going down a lot from then, right? You can't, you can't, can't make the repayments because you're in that instant mess, aren't you? Why do you think Kenny chose to go to a company like that to help himself? Because I think maybe he didn't see any other way. He was a proud, he's, like, he's a bloke, he's proud, you know what I mean? He wouldn't, he wouldn't tell, he wouldn't come up to us like and go, give us some money or I need help. He would have tried to do it secretly. He wouldn't want his family and friends knowing that he was struggling. With spiralling debts, Kenny couldn't see a way out. Said to owe thousands to payday lenders, he took his own life in the very field he played rugby. I was driving up Aircroft Road down there, my mate rang me, and he said, he just said, Kenny's killed himself. And I just started, I started putting the wall going mad when I didn't believe it, and then my mum and dad said, what's up with you? And I was just a mess. Then it got worse, and pretty rough, everyone crying over onto each other and stuff. How do you feel about the fact that he he killed himself in this park where you all grew up and where you played rugby for so long together? Um, I just I just think he hoped he, he hoped he stayed there. If that makes sense, he hoped his spirit was there, and that's why he did it. That could be. I don't, I don't know. Like when it, actually when he died, we all come here and just spoke about memories, you know. But it on the talking. He shouldn't have died. <laughs> His friends are in no doubt that the lenders Kenny borrowed from share some responsibility for his death. It's such a dark thing that's happened, yeah. such a tragic thing that's happened. It's sort of quite strange that the adverts are so jolly and colourful. Yeah, well, exactly. They don't show you. They don't show you the people crying at tears at home when they can't afford to feed the families, and they've got. That's the last resort to go to one of these companies. If you can't afford to pay off, for, say, a hundred pound debt, how are you going to get yourself in four hundred pound debt and pay that off? And that's why they're just ripping people off. I wish they weren't now. <laughs> Love them or loathe them, there is no doubt payday loan companies offer something that traditional banks can't and won't compete with. And when they behave responsibly, some can offer an invaluable service. But there are other places you can go to source a less risky short-term loan. Struggling with debts through doorstep and payday lenders, Sarai and Katrina, the Swansea mums I met earlier, have joined the local credit union, a sort of community bank. Why have you decided to come to credit union today? We've come to open up a savings account with them. What did you know about it before you got here? Um, not a lot. So we've come to find out a bit more, to see what we'll do. The main thing is that the interest rates are extremely low and that they do put quite a lot of emphasis on saving your money, yeah. helping you save. I'm really up to saving now and being able to sort my money out and keep myself in check now as well. Yeah. So. There are over 500 credit unions across the UK offering savings and loans to their members. Most now offer current accounts and a few even offer mortgages. So far, over 1.5 million of us have signed up. So why do you think the girls should be here? Well, it's a lot cheaper than a payday loan company. We only charge 2% interest per month. Oh, my God, that's a totally different kind of number than a payday loan mm, company. Yeah. The thing with our loans is we take time in looking at them and making sure people can afford them rather than just approving them straight away. Yeah. It's sort of a good thing, though, isn't it? Mm. It's like it, it is actually being thought through. Yeah. I want to sign up. I'm going to do it now, yeah. Our Swansea mums aren't the only people I've met now reorganising their finances. To pay off her £1,000 debt to her parents, Lauren has had to put education on hold and take two jobs. Are you angry that this thing has happened? I, won't, I don't want to say happened to you because I think you know that yeah. it was your choice, but you're angry that this is now part of your story. Life isn't all... Roses, is it? It doesn't all it doesn't all go exactly to plan. At the same time, it did make me stop in my tracks in the end when my mum went absolutely like ballistic at me, and I have I honestly haven't done anything since. Yeah. Um, for the first for the last few months, I've actually got from one end to the end of the month, and I've had money at the end of the month. Which, oh my god, that's a great feeling. Yeah, it's really really good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know something something kind of clicked. It all like sent it kind of grounds you. But the one I'm most pleased about is my Rochdale friend Josh. So how are things now? 
for you, Joshy. Brilliant. We were signed up to an agency. Um, Brilliant. Since we did the secret filming. Um, and they've got me a job at a place. So you have got a job? Yeah, I've got uh, a this job. This is what now. I wanted to hear today, Josh. That's so brilliant. <laughs> the best part about that is that I can now start a debt management plan, which means basically they freeze the interest, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, and that's I pay, they work out what I can afford each month with still my living expenses as well. So I can pay off my debts but still have money to live at the same time. I'm now, don't get a phone call, don't get letters. You have your life back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it like when you do walk down the high street and you see payday loan shops now? How do you feel? <laughs> laugh. You laugh? No, yeah. Um, <laughs> you can now no, chuckle in the face yeah. of payday loan shops. Yeah, we're embarrassing walking past before because they, they know that I owe them money. Yeah. But now I can walk past them with head held high knowing that they're getting paid off. I love that. I love that you feel like that. That's brilliant. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I'm so, really, well done, Josh. Really. Thank you. Hearing about the problems caused by payday loans, it would be easy to say lenders need to be reined in more, and in the worst cases, maybe even stopped from trading. But some of them do play by the rules. So when trying to decide who's responsible for all this, I can't help thinking there's blame on both sides. Anyone that takes out a payday loan, of course, takes full responsibility for taking it out. No one forces anyone to take out a payday loan. But I don't think half the people that get them know what questions to ask the companies. And it's absolutely up to the company to give out the right information because it just it terrifies me that if people aren't getting the right information, that they're going to continue to get into like re actual real trouble with companies they thought were there to help them. A million people are going to be taking out payday loans for Christmas this year. But if the money's not lent responsibly, I wonder how many of them really know what they're getting into.